Russian occupiers are trying to break through to the city of Kurokovo in the Pokrovsk district of the Donetsk region. This was stated by the representative of the press service of the 79th Separate Airborne Assault Tavry Cheskaya Brigade of Ukraine, Orest Drimalovsky. He noted that the enemy's plans were clear. After capturing Vuladar, they would move on to Kurokovo. They are throwing large forces into breaking through, in particular, the defenses of the 79th Air Assault Brigade in the area of the village of Konstantinovka. In October, there were already two massive assaults, said Drimalovsky. According to him, the enemy in the Kurokovo direction is not afraid to use its equipment and attacks in columns. He noted that on October the 1st, the occupiers threw 19 armored vehicles into battle and yesterday, October the 3rd, 10 armored vehicles. Our paratroopers have effectively reduced this Russian assault to zero. Out of 10 units of equipment, our soldiers destroyed seven, a tank and six combat armored vehicles with paratroopers. 20 occupiers were killed in this attack and more than 20 were wounded. But the occupiers have obviously sensed blood and are trying to speed up their offensive, but our soldiers are doing everything to disrupt these enemy plans and inflict significant losses on them. The situation remains very tense, emphasized the representative of the press service of the 79th Air Assault Brigade. According to him, each such attack ends with the enemy losing up to 10 units of armored vehicles. This area, where Nikolaev's paratroopers are stationed, near the village of Konstantinovka in the Marienskaya community, is in fact a graveyard of Russian armored vehicles. If you look from a bird's eye view, these are in fact hundreds of burned Russian tanks and other armored vehicles. As reported, Ukrainian military expert Alexander Musienko believes that Russian troops had an advantage in the Volodar direction, which is why the Ukrainian armed forces had to retreat. According to him, the enemy will now control the commanding heights and the Ukrainian defenders will have to retreat to the fortified lines. He noted that the enemy will probably continue the offensive further to the northwest and will move towards Kurokovo. And as military expert and employee of the security service of Ukraine, Ivan Stupak reported, Russian occupiers want to tear the Donetsk region into two parts, the so-called North and the so-called South, in order to completely occupy it. On August the 6th, Ukrainian forces invaded Russia's Kursk region, capturing hundreds of miles of territory, but Ukraine is paying for the invasion by surrendering cities in the east and destroying its most precious equipment. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, the 21st Mechanized Brigade is taking part in the offensive in the Kursk region, which has the most advanced and best Western tanks in its arsenal. STRV-122 stroke Leopard 2A6 these two types differ mainly in the length of the main guns, and according to videos from social networks, one of these tanks was shot down by a drone or hit a mine during a battle near the village of Vesyaloy. The analyst emphasizes that each STRV-122 and Leopard 2A6 is precious, as Ukraine received only 10 STRV-122s from Sweden and 21 Leopard 2A6 from Germany and Portugal, all in 2023. By the spring, about 20 of these tanks remained. All of them belonged to the 21st Mechanized Brigade, and it is unlikely to expect new deliveries. While the Ukrainian Army's other Leopard 2 brigades, the 33rd and 155th Mechanized Brigades, operate older and more numerous Leopard 2A4 models and have received several batches of the new tanks to replace battlefield losses, the 21st Mechanized Brigade, with its newer tank models, is unlikely to receive any new vehicles. As Axe notes, the Swedish and German armies are struggling to maintain their own tank brigades, neither plans to part with their best tanks anymore. At the same time, the analyst notes, there is evidence that the 21st Mechanized Brigade has already lost at least one tank in the Kursk region, which burned after being hit by an explosive FPV drone. The Ukrainian commanders are willing to risk their last STRV-122s and Leopard 2A6s in Kursk, speaks to the importance they attach to the Ukrainian invasion of the region.
The invasion effort is costing the Ukrainians vulnerable cities and vital transport assets. For now, that is a price they are willing to pay. The analyst concludes. Russians are experiencing a shell famine due to numerous strikes on ammunition depots of the defense forces of Ukraine. According to Defense Express, this was stated by one of Russia's propagandists, Yegor Guzenko. According to him, the Russian army began to experience a shell famine after the destruction of depots in Toropets and Tikhoretsk. Those areas where there is active fighting now, there is this famine in form of limits being felt there. The 98th Airborne Division has problems at Chasiv Yar as well as a number of other units. I will not name them because there are a lot of them. Such problems are currently gaining momentum massively, he said. According to Guzenko, this is a recent phenomenon caused by the destruction of ammunition depots by Ukrainian drone attacks in Toropets, in the Tver region and Tikhoretsk, in Krasnodar Krai, in the middle of September and said the attacks were continuing. He alleged the issue is particularly affecting those areas of the front where active assault operations are taking place. The 98th Airborne Division has this problem, as do a number of other units. I will not name them because there are too many, he said. He added that the problem was getting worse and rationing of artillery shells was being imposed on some units. He complained that even so, Russian troops were still being forced to assault Ukrainian positions without artillery support. He went on to imply that there was something criminal happening among Russia's commanders. In echoes of the complaints made by Yevgeny Prigozhin, the former leader of the Wagner PMC in May last year, Guzenko opined, but even if this happened, if some of the warehouses were destroyed, it doesn't mean that our factories suddenly stopped. The factories work every day, day and night. This ammunition goes somewhere. The mill blogger then asked, where does this ammunition go? Why is there so few of it for the troops? According to an Estonian intelligence assessment, the strike by the Ukrainian armed forces on the Toropets depot on September the 18th could have destroyed as much as two months' worth of Russian artillery ammunition along with Iskander and Tochka U 122mm rockets and aerial bombs.